Well, welcome everybody to April. It's um, uh, April for refresh, renew, and refuel. Um, our theme this month has been Mediterranean way of life. And for those of you that don't know, I am Greek. Um, and so Mediterranean life is basically my whole way of life. I've lived this whole way. And um, we all know that the Mediterranean diet is very, very popular right now. And if you hear the Greek music, of course, of course, you start putting that on and you put it with a Greek and who knows what's going to happen with me today, but <laughs> um, you mix nutrient dense foods combined with living a full life and that's the perfect combination of Mediterranean living. So it's not only of what you eat and the whole food that we put in our system, it's about joy and community. And one thing about being Greek, it's about how we get together, how we find our food tribe and how we find people that are like-minded to support each other and how and what we do and what we eat. So it's not just about what we eat, it's how we eat and how we source it and support one another. So we're kicking it off about, I think we're gonna start off with Jen doing smoothies. We're gonna throw some hacks in this whole way. And um, Mediterranean isn't only Greek, as you know, I'm going to throw in an Italian. I'm coming out a little bit, but um, Mimi's going Greek for us today. And so you'll get a little bit of everything. But um, Jen, you're up. Well, hello, everybody. I am Jen Brinsmade, and I'm the Italian teaching you about my philosophy. So I'm a health coach, and I've been living this healthy lifestyle for over 30 years of my life. And I probably about 15 years ago adopted what I call drink your breakfast. And the reason why I adopted that is number one, I was a busy mom and I health was important to me, but I just could every day I thought to myself, what am I going to eat that's, that's, you know, was different than yesterday that was filled with nutrition and I just started drinking smoothies and not the Smoothie King kind of smoothies, sorry, Smoothie King lovers, but not loaded with sugar, um, but with loaded with lots of nutrition, okay? So the recipe that I am going to be doing today, well, I, first of all, I wanna introduce my little sidekick. She's actually not so little anymore. This is Tessa, she's my sixth grader. Um, she has tried lots of smoothies over the years of my, in my test kitchen. And unfortunately, most she hasn't liked. <laughs> so she does like this one. So it's one of those like, okay, I know what I can make everybody that everybody's going to be happy that day. So my drink your breakfast philosophy is a green breakfast protein smoothie. Okay. So I'm going to just do the foundation and then I'm going to show you some things that you can add in to make it even more nutritious because starting your day with a nutritious breakfast really sets the tone for the rest of your day, okay? Trust me, I've coached a lot of people and I have you know, just friends and family and that is the feedback that I get. And that's what we are here for with our meal prep community is we are just, you know, we live this lifestyle and we just want to lock arms with you and get you to understand that living a healthy lifestyle is really not that difficult. Okay, it does go against the norm of what is occurring in our country. 88% of the people in our country are metabolically unhe unhealthy. We need to do something about that. Okay, so drink your breakfast. All right, first things first, blender. Okay, so if you are going to adopt a drink your breakfast philosophy, blender does make all the difference. I'm not telling you to go out and buy an expensive blender, but I want you to understand that a high powered blender like this Blendtec or a Vitamix they make the difference because they blend everything up, make it super liquefied. It's not chunky and gloppy, which is a lot of reasons why people don't like green smoothies, okay? So the first thing we're gonna put in is the plant-based milk, okay? I've chosen plant-based um, almond milk, unsweetened almond milk. And let me see, I can't see my, all right. I say 10 to 12 ounces, okay? All right, then, but also you can also do unsweetened coconut milk. You can even do unsweetened oat milk. All right, then the next thing is I'm gonna put in the protein powder. This is my favorite, Juice Plus. Juice Plus is um, plant-based and it has lots of plant nutrition on top of 13 or 14 grams of protein 
and lots of fiber as well, okay? So just in that protein powder alone, like if you couldn't do all this and all you did was this protein powder, you would have a pretty decent meal. All right, then the next, would you go get me the greens? I forgot that. The next thing is the greens, all right? Tess is getting the spinach. I forgot to grab it out of the fridge. It's really important. This is kind of a hack. Put in your greens before you put in your frozen fruit because if you put the frozen fruit at the bottom, oftentimes it congeals around the, um, the blade and it makes it difficult to blend, okay? So I have organic baby spinach. You can do super greens, you can do kale. My recommendation is to pick two greens that you really like, organic preferably, and just alternate them so you're getting a mixture of different nutrients. All right, and then I do lots of greens. All right, so I'm gonna do three big handfuls, okay? All right, then the next thing is going to be your fruit, okay? Low glycemic berries are your best choices. So blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, strawberries. If you're gonna use things like banana or pineapple, it's fine because there's a lot of nutrition in it, but you just wanna make sure that you're not overdoing it because again, sugar is sugar. Your body doesn't really know the difference, unfortunately. Okay, so about half cup to a cup, okay? Then I throw in, because I am a, fan of chocolate, raw cacao powder, okay? Cacao powder, if you're a chocolate person, go for raw cacao, organic preferably, two tablespoons, one to two. I like two because I'm, like I said, I love chocolate. High in magnesium. And most people are deficient in magnesium. So this is a super easy way to get magnesium into your body. All right, then the next thing you're gonna pick chia seeds or flax seeds, okay? Tablespoon of chia seed, that's what I'm gonna do today. All right, then you're going to put some form of MCT or organic olive oil in it. Sounds like, ooh, that sounds gross. Honestly, oil healthy fats are so important. Years ago, we were on this low fat kick not good for our bodies. These types of oils lower inflammation and guess what? Our brain, our brain needs these healthy oils, healthy fats. Our brains do not have um, pain receptors so they can't tell us if they are inflamed. So we need to be putting lots of nutrition in our body and oils, healthy oils are one of them that are really good because we don't want to have dementia. I don't know about you, but I do forget a lot of things, but typically because I'm trying to do too many things. All right, so a tablespoon, do an FCT today. And this is actually from coconuts. All right, then let's see, have I done everything? Yes, then all filled with nutrition, right? Then this is kind of like to elevate it to the next level, I put in Juice Plus capsules. So Juice Plus has found a way to take fruits and vegetables, pulverize them, dry them, and stick them into a capsule. So in these capsules, you are getting 30 fruits and vegetables, okay? So every single day flooding your body. On top of what you're doing with what I just put in, it is like amazing, a, amazing way to get lots of nutrition in your body very simply, okay? So that's it. So then you're gonna put the lid on. Tessa, would you put me on mute for just a second, honey? I don't want to offend you all because it's loud. All right. Okay, so I did not do the full minute because it is quite a lengthy process. However, just in less than 30 seconds, I just want you to see how liquefied this is. Can you see that? Capsules, you don't, there's no chunks, nothing. 
it's completely blended, right? So with the Juice Plus capsules too, you do not have to open them up and dump, dump them in. They are vegan capsules and I've put them in water before. I'm just curious to see. And they, they go, um, they, um, what's the word? Dissolve. They dissolve within like 15 seconds. Okay, so that's it. That is the green breakfast protein smoothie. A couple of little hacks, okay? Number one, if in your mind you're thinking gross green or you have kids, like I have a child that even giving, trying to get them to eat spinach or broccoli, they will not touch it, okay? Opaque cup, put a lid on it and a straw you can't see through. Try it. It worked for me. <laughs> so I had a husband that was for years was like, I am not touching that. So finally I made it for him. I told him I put nothing green in it and he drank it and he loved it. Then I proceeded to tell him I did a lie, but the spinach, you cannot taste it. You cannot taste the spinach. Okay. Yes. You can taste kale. Kale is my least favorite, but I do it. I always say I sit down and love my smoothie most days, but my kale days, I tolerate it but it has a lot of nutrition. Okay. Then a couple more hacks, just because I want you guys to have more nutrition in your bodies, plant nutrition, frozen broccoli. Okay. Frozen broccoli, frozen cauliflower, frozen squash. You can put that into your smoothie and you will not taste it. Promise. Okay. And I do that with my kids and they don't even mulch. And then um, adding just a few more things we can add in spirulina. Spirulina is a superfood and it has lots of iron. Again, some more plant protein in it. Um, let's see. Also glutamine powder. Can you see that? Glutamine is really good for, um, for gut health and also for your small intestines. Just helps again, clean the system out, right? The, what we want is more things cleaning the toxins out of our body. And that's all of this plant nutrition will do that. All right. And I think that's it. And then listen, if you feel like this is too much to do every single day, you can prep it ahead of time. You can put all of your, like anything that's dry, you can put in say a reusable bag or a container like a mason jar or a Tupperware. And then all like the frozen or refrigerated stuff, leave the liquid separate. You can put those in separate containers too and store them in the freezer. Then you just pull them out and you can dump it all together, put the liquid in first and then dump everything in literally from start to finish. Even when I do all this every single day is about seven minutes from start to finish. That means cleaning the blender too, okay? So drink your breakfast. I say to you, consider adopting a new habit and just try it out and just pay attention to how you feel. I could bet that you're going to feel better than you normally do with most breakfasts that you eat. All right. That's my, that's my green breakfast protein smoothie. It's on to you, Miss Mimi. Well, I have a question for you, Jen, because something yes. I hadn't thought of was the glutathione. glutathione. Yeah. Um, that, how do you, I mean, where do you get it? I buy it on my most favorite website is called VitaCost, V-I-T-A-C-O-S-T, VitaCost.com. This brand is called Aero, A-R-O. Um, and it's just, it's, you know, if you can see it. Yeah. It's a of. white powder. I actually, when I travel, I travel with all the baggies of everything. And I've had, every time I have that, in, <laughs> it gets open because it probably looks like cocaine. Sorry, that's not something I would ever even think of doing, but it get my bag gets open every single time I have my stuff for my travel with the, all my ingredients. So anyway. Yeah. So do you take your blend tech to Mexico? I did not take my blend tech to Mexico. That I contemplated it, but every other trip I have, I just decided that I would figure it out when I got there and thank goodness they had healthy juices and things. So I, you know, but I did miss my, my smoothie when I got home, that was the first thing I made. <laughs> oh, and you know what? I, I do want to say one thing, you know, if this is not something that you have, let's just say you don't make time. We always have time for things that are important to us, but if you don't have the time or make the time in the morning, this is something you can do for lunch or even for dinner. Sometimes I just have a smoothie for dinner because I just want to just kind of give my gut some, you know, just a little bit of uh, a break. 
but it definitely trying to get a smoothie in that has this much nutrition every single day would be a huge, huge addition to improving your health. I have a question. Do you yes. do, um, do you use any flavored almond milk or is that the silk just the plain? Unsweetened. That is just the unsweetened, unsweetened. And just, okay. again, just to, because I really honestly don't think even with the flavor, with all of these other flavors, you wouldn't even taste it. And then where the sugar is concerned, we want to just keep this starting your day, especially with as minimal amount of sugar as possible. That's why I always choose unsweetened. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you were to make this like an hour or two in advance, like prior to your workout or whatever, do you think it would mm -hmm. still the consistency hold up okay? Or is it really like make and drink now type thing? Well, it definitely gets thicker as time goes on, mm -hmm. but it's as simple as taking a spoon or a knife and just stirring it up and it, and it mm -hmm. loosens itself up. It is, you know, colder, the better. Um, I usually add some ice cubes to mine just because mm -hmm. I like mine really cold. My husband doesn't care, but, um, but yeah, I think that for me, um, my experience has been when it sits for more than an hour, I mean, an hour is mm -hmm. fine, but it, when it sits longer than that, it does get mm -hmm. a little on the thick side. Okay. I Thank wonder you. too, I, I've done this where you put it in one of the shaker bottles with the steel ball and just, that's a great it. idea. Oh, and it, and it, back to the original consistency that you really want. All right, I'll try that maybe for sure. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing is, I got, it's not gonna make you a big smoothie, but it's great for traveling and it's great for my kids when they're in college. Have y'all seen Blend yet? No, no I haven't. It's what is that? Portable. Oh. Blend. So it's very small, see how big it is? Not big. And do you drink out of that as well? Well, it, it literally blends, like it has a USB port oh my gosh <laughs> make smoothies so what i'm saying is for mexico you would just have to make like two or three to make the size of yeah our, i love our blend tech so it's not portable to t you know i can't figure out how to take my blend tech with me so no. i, I one need that beach and one, but this is great because see it's not big it's just a portable yeah i need beer, that but it's um blendjet.com b-e-l-n-j-e-t.com thank you no is the contain is the container plastic or glass yeah. Plastic. Plastic. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. And it, it literally, I mean, are you probably, I mean, it's got a, it's got the blend tag yeah. blender in it. Yeah. So it's not going to do heavy, 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 but you can definitely throw greens in it with the almond milk and are complete for sure. You probably couldn't go crazy on a ton of frozen stuff. You could throw in some, like you could probably throw in the berries and throw in the greens and, you know, do a little at a time. You couldn't make mm -hmm. high powders or blend tech. But huh. you're out of town and you just yeah, want Yeah, I need that. Yes, you <laughs> definitely, definitely need that. it. Because when you're out of town and you don't have a blender, you just make two or three of these and it makes our call bounce. So yeah, and it comes have in you do you swear by that brand or like I'm looking on Amazon right now, there seems to be a lot of different brands. Have you tried different brands over time and you, and you like that particular one or. Oh, my blender is the same as Jen. Yeah. I, I swear by blend tech. I mean, yeah. I love blend tech. It makes soup. I have a Vitamix blender, but I don't have anything portable to take. Yeah. And this is the only one that I found that had a high enough with the blade in it. I haven't seen any. Oh. Of them, so I don't know of another one. I just threw a stocking stuffers um, last Christmas and everyone got one just because we were on the way or, or like going to work for my husband he got sick of just shaking it and he wanted it a little bit softer. Yeah. Then I just gave him all these to take with them. And it's easy. Diane, to will you wait? Diane, will you put that in the chat, that's that link, uh, so that everybody can see that. And look, everyone, you get to start your Christmas list today. Oh, it's a great stocking. I know. Love it. <laughs> I love it. Um, thank you, Jen. That was fabulous. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Tessa, to your, your beautiful assistant, Tessa. We were yeah, so she, to she kind of walked away, but she did te test it. Tessa, come and tell me, what'd you think? Honestly, what do you think? We want, want her to be honest because quite honestly, it's it's been a struggle for me. I've tried so many protein powders. I'm not kidding you when I say at least 10 to 12 different protein powders and this juice plus protein powder, everybody likes it in my house. So I like the protein powder, but you didn't really love this? What didn't you like about it? It's too thick for her. <laughs> my okay, daughter, my daughter, 
my daughter is also 12. <laughs> and whenever she sees that green, she's like, oh, no, 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 no green. But, but look, I like that idea. You can't see. I mean, yeah. this, this straw, I would go a little darker. We have a purple one, but I couldn't find it. But it's not. Again, it's yeah. all about nutrition. Get I, more in your body. You want to thrive, right? Yeah. So okay. maybe for Tessa and those who don't like thick smoothies, you add a half cup of water. Yeah. Yes. You know? yeah. yeah. I got my ways. <laughs> Yeah, I bet you do. All right, I'm going to do a, it's a Mediterranean, but we all know it's Greek and Diane will make sure you know that. She's doing the Italian worm salad, but um, I'm not Greek, but I absolutely love this dish. So I'm going to adjust my camera so you can see and tell me, can y'all see my ingredients? Yes. Can you see my, can you see my bowl? Okay, so um, these are the chickpeas. And I don't usually do this. I usually just get canned to make it easier, but I had time. So I put these in my instant pot with some water, oh. seasoning, salt. It was really easy if you, if you mm. use any kind of quick cooker or you can soak them overnight and do them on the stove for two hours. But I did salt, pepper and added some cumin um, and some turmeric. So extra anti-inflammatory. So that's where I got my chickpeas. I'm going to just dump them in my bowl here. Um, I'm going to see if I can make this where y'all can see what I'm doing. Okay. And then um, I'm going to just put the ingredients in here and you can see everything as it goes in. Chickpeas. Okay. So red bell pepper, red bell pepper is, it's just a colorful salad too. But there's some really great properties about red bell pepper. I chopped everything up, just making sure you can see this. And the next ingredient, oh, is the parsley. So this parsley is so good for you. And I am going to tell you a couple of things, but right now I'm just gonna make the salad, but um, I can grow this on my tower garden too. And it's so interesting how good parsley is for you. Mm -hmm. I bet you could put that in your smoothie too, Jen. And that, I think that would be fabulous. Um, then I've got some red onion, a half cup of red onion. I may have a little more than a half cup there. I, I just chopped up half an onion. <laughs> Um, I did not do, uh, let's see, uh, this recipe, I don't know if you're looking at my recipe, but I did not do the celery leaves. I skipped that. And here are my um, cherry tomatoes that are cut in half. So as you can see, my bowl is already really full, really full. But you can extend it by putting on a bed of greens like spinach or sweet kale off the tower garden. Now I have a dressing that goes on it. Does everyone use this for your lemon juice? Mm -hmm. You're awesome because you aren't picking seeds out. So what I did was I used minced garlic already in here. Um, you can just smash a clove of garlic with the side of your knife. It's so easy to get the flavor released. Garlic is really, really good for you. And um, there's, I'll tell you more about that in a minute too. So I'm gonna do one and a half lemons in here with the garlic. That's a lot of lemon juice. But lemon is also extremely good for your immune system and um, anti-inflammatory. Um, it's a way to wake up your digestive system. It's really, really good. In fact, everything in this salad is super good for you. Well, this is a big one. I feel like I've got plenty of lemon juice in here now. Then I'm adding my oil. So I want to show you my oil. And like Jen, I'm using this MCT oil. But I'm also using, you can use what you like to taste of. This is an extra virgin olive oil that I just got at the store and it's, it's um, non-GMO and clean. It's a Texas brand. But um, Dr. Sears talked about this oil recently and Jen already touched on how it's um, anti-dementia, but this brand is really good. I know some of you bought Garden of Life. I know there's probably other good brands too, but a tablespoon of this in your smoothie or on your salad. So what I did was, um, I wouldn't cook with it though. I put two tablespoons of the MCT oil in and one tablespoon of the olive oil. And I'm gonna put that in with the lemon juice and the garlic. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of pepper, I mean, to taste. And then I'm using pink Himalayan salt just because I like that one. You can do sea salt, you can use whatever you like. Um, I'm not using a whole lot. Okay, so I'm not even gonna mix this up. I'm just gonna dump it 
I'm just gonna dump this whole thing over the salad because I'm gonna toss it really well. Um, you can eat this over a bed of greens. I like those spinach or kale. I will tell you the best kale in the world comes from the tower garden. It is sweet and tender and it is, oh, I love it. I, I, I know what Jen's talking about. Sometimes a kale smoothie is gross because it's bitter. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're this one's really, really good. So that's it. How simple is that? First, the prep time. I probably spent about 30 minutes on prep time. But now I have a, sal a nice salad here uh, for days, <laughs> actually. Um, and I you could add a protein to this if you wanted to add chicken or, um, I don't know, tofu. or It, it has protein because chickpeas are full of protein but you could add something else and make it like your full meal. So now all I'm gonna do is tell you a couple of awesome things about those ingredients and why you want them. So uh, parsley, okay, I wanted to start with parsley. It has, of course, antioxidants in it that support bone health and that prevent cancer and protect against heart disease and, and fight infection. Um, and then we know that according to the website NIH.gov, Onions are really good for you. I don't know, does anybody know that already? I read so much about onions. They're reported to have a range of health benefits that also include anti-carcinogenic, anti-platelet clump, clumping, um, thrombotic, sorry, thrombotic activity, um, anti-asthmatic and antibiotic effect. Wow. Um, red bell peppers. They have the carotenoids, particularly beta carotene, that hence the color red. Lutein's good for your eyes and your brain. And it's a stimulus for nourishing a fetus. For, so for a pregnant mom, that red bell pepper is really good. It's also ideal for weight loss and digestive health and anti-inflammatory and helps out your nervous system. So, wow, lots of healthy good stuff in here. So that's that's the finished product. There's the it's salad. Beautiful. So, so many colors, right? I mean, it it's makes me gorgeous. Nervous. Yes. Mom, you match it. Yes. Hey, I got peer pressure in the wearing a tank top today. So. <laughs> you got to show your muscles, Mimi. And you look so pretty. You match exactly with the tomatoes. It's so colorful. Yes. <laughs> and the red bell pepper, right? <laughs> it looks delicious. Okay. So, um, that's it, unless anybody has any questions about that salad. No, I can't wait to make it. I'm making that for dinner. Yeah, with I'm making it after you. Yes, that's what yeah. I'm making too, besides the spare. I'm having it all tonight. Except for your <laughs> that's going to be in the morning. But I make your smoothie every morning. It's like my favorite drink of the day. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Um, okay, so we're going to move into this one. And um, my daughter showed up, my sous chef, Anna. So she's in the background. So she. She's basically starting right now because the recipe is the Italian style farro, right farro. So um, right now what she's doing is uh, the skillet is we've got some organic olive oil and um, we are right now on medium high heat doing red onion and Brussels. And they're just cooking for about four minutes. And then we're going to add prosciutto, walnuts, and garlic. This is very, very simple recipe because once that cooks for another couple minutes, I've already cooked the farro and that um, was just cooked with some organic chicken broth. And so we're gonna add that to it and basically drizzling the balsamic glaze. So while she's doing all that, I was so um, inspired. I've got a really good, um, a cookbook that I have referred to many times. And I love it because it's not basically just your normal cookbook, but we were doing Mediterranean, so I pulled it out because um, obviously she's a Greek cook and an author, but she's a nutritionist and she's done a lot of research on nutrition. It's called The Wild Mediterranean. I'll throw it in um, our chat. And so she goes on the whole premise, which is what I started this whole, um, our whole virtual meal prep on that um, Mediterranean cooking and the Mediterranean life is not what you eat only, it's how you eat and it's about joy and community. And so um, her, when she talks about this whole cookbook, there's a lot of reading besides just recipes. 
And the beauty of the cookbook is she'll go in and she throws in fowl for her chicken. She gives you recipes for Spain, for France, for Greece, and for Italy. Or she'll go in and give you a recipe for a lamb and she'll give you from all the different areas in um, the Mediterranean diet. So you're not just going only Greek. She's giving you different views of how important herbs are so that you might be using rosemary or you might be using the importance of Greeks using oregano and lemon. So the importance of herbs and how the, um, our body needs those different herbs and the different benefits for it. And she talks about a lot about the foundation, which I think, uh, Jen, you talked great and brought a lot about our gut health and how our gut health is so important in our nutrition. So she says a lot, there's a relationship between poor diet and the range of our health disorders. And so it all starts with how we eat and how we live. And it starts with our digestive tracts and how they have a powerful impact on our overall health. So we, number one, we all know we don't eat a broad variety of diet of foods. And we also, they're not as nutritionally dense as they should be because of the environment we live in and the toxins and the pesticides. So she says in what we need to always focus, obviously, is fresh plant-based. And there are a lot of times less accessible and everybody turns to process convenience foods, so to speak. So our gut isn't able to thrive as it should. So she goes into the foul five and she says, no matter what, no matter what in your life, um, it actively upsets the balance of your digestive system. And we all know this processed sugars, artificial flavorings, coloring, sweeteners, additives, texturizers, and preservatives. So those are the foul five, no matter what you do, whether you're on a detox, whether you're on just your normal life. And those are just the things that are just the things you always avoid. Um, she talks about the importance of prebiotics and how they're important for our gut because we know they go straight to the GI tract and straight into absorption for um, our, the healthy bacteria to gobble them up and, and give them the nutrients they need that they need. She also talks about how important green leafy vegetables are. Thus, we started this whole um, Mediterranean thing of April and the importance of even gardening at home and, and, big, and trying to do organic and, and you know, bringing the garden back to our house. Um, I know a lot of us have our tower gardens and we thrive on it. Mine's getting... And of course, everybody has names. Um, mine's name's Bessie. Mess Bessie's getting ready to come out of the garage and I'm getting ready to order all my seedlings because we live on her all summer because you go in there, get your kale, you get your spinach, you get you know, all your romaines, all your lettuces and what better way to go walk out in your backyard and pick up your fresh herbs, your basil and everything else to garden from your house and pick it up and have fresh. And I don't care what anyone says, tomatoes and lettuces come right off your garden um, versus the grocery store. The taste is totally different. Um, last year, I don't even know if I can ever go back to eating grocery store cucumbers because our cucumbers are so much better. So um, how are we doing over here? Do you want me to add the kitchen on? Yes. So Anna's kind of doing the background cooking so you can see the end because basically it's just putting it in a wok and she's over here doing the wok and she's throwing in the <laughs> walnuts, which are right over here. How many? And the garlic is ready. I'm gonna hand her the recipe. And, um, and I'm just gonna throw you a couple of things. So, um, so she also goes into um, as far as um, plants. She says, you know, there's no better friend for our body than just plants and meaning fruits and vegetables. And we keep talking about the importance of fruits and vegetables and how much the vitamins and minerals and what they do in our, in our digestion and how much they boost our immune system. So um, fiber is another important thing that the fruits and vegetables do. So this whole Mediterranean way of life is basically on the simple things of fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, and unprocessed um, dairy. And of course you throw in a few little grains. And then of course you throw in the Greek music, the fun community, 
which of course my people are showing up right now, which is what makes it all fun of why you live this way. And um, it, it um, nourishes not only your body, but your soul. So she um, says, you have to find things in life. And I'm gonna throw this in while Anna's finishing it because I love, and I feel like we um, try to live this way in our community that we're in right now is we learn to move our bodies. That's the most important thing. You have to move, move your bodies. We need to learn to manage our stress and we need to find stress busters, whether that's exercise, whether it's your quiet time. You need to start your day off with something that makes you happy. So something that makes you happy, whether it's quietly reading, whether it's meditating, whether it's listening to a song, but if you don't start the way off, starting the morning off with something that brings joy, how do you carry the joy the rest of the day? So you got to wake up finding that way to find that light. And then of course you find the food that is simple, the basics of life and how you do it. So a couple of hacks, I was thinking, what are my hacks to tell you guys? And the easiest hack to talk about is the herbs. And when you go buy these herbs, every time you get them from the grocery store, you go, oh my gosh, you stick them in. If you don't have your tower garden and you stick them in the refrigerator, they go bad really quick. So one is you can always wrap them loosely with a dampened um, paper towel and throw them in a Ziploc bag. And they'll pretty much stay fresh for about a week. You're not gonna get much more out of them. But if you get them from the grocery store and you're buying a fresh herb and you wanna use them for the week to cook with, try doing that and see if that helps for you. Um, as far as if organic is hard for you to find and hard for you to put into your budget, always go to the frozen food section and look for your vegetables there because they are taken right off the harvest and flash frozen. So you're getting the nutritional benefits of getting a vine ripened picked and you're getting them from frozen much more um, nutrient dense than you're getting it from a can that is packed full of sodium and you're getting from a grocery store that is a non-organic um, vegetable. So we're gonna look at see um and i'm gonna leave you with a little conclusion because i don't want to i want to be mindful and we're kind of good on our time if y'all have some hacks i'm gonna go check on my food for a second you can throw a hack i'm gonna come right back and tell you we'll look and see what's going on over here and um i don't know how to do the camera change so we're going to go this way so we can kind of see it cooking can you kind of see what it's looking like it looks really good it smells yeah. really good it's all mixing together. And the last thing you do is we're gonna drizzle balsamic glaze. And I just have an organic um, balsamic glaze that I've bought that I'm drizzling on top of it. And I've got organic Parmesan cheese that you sprinkle on with the organic um, balsamic um, glaze. And that's it. It is a very simple 20 minute recipe. The hardest thing about that recipe was your 30, 40 minutes of prep to cook your farro. Other than that, there's not much else that you had to do. And then you're going to sprinkle fresh basil to put on top of it. Is that so, a side dish, Diane? Or a uh, it's a side dish because, well, for me, um, because we're still in Lent. So for us, it's going to be um, Easter, Orthodox Easter isn't until May 2nd. So it's actually the prosciutto is not going in ours. My brother's coming and is eating the prosciutto one. We have a second batch going, <laughs> but yes, it's going to be a side dish for them. I'm going to do just some grilled chicken. Um, but for us, I'm just going to make it my um, main thing and throw, of course, the Greek salad because you always have a Greek salad with everything. It's like the staple of life. <laughs> everything goes with a Greek salad. Even when, you know, someone, I laugh when we shred tin, they go, no dairy. And I go, except for feta. Feta is an <laughs> exclusion to life. It goes in with everything. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Cool. Yes, but I think you could throw anything with it. I mean, I think it's a really good side that you could put you know any protein you wanted to put next to it you can even throw in a hearty fish yeah oh that would be good really good yeah you know? um well, but i love i'm going to throw in this while we're chatting just because we're on her this cookbook i just i recommend it just because it's a nice thing of life and she says um she um basically says the way of life practiced by her greek relatives make you feel vibrant and strong i was eating whole food prepared at their seasonality, moving in my body regularly, organically connecting with nature on a daily basis, 
participating in traditions that connected me with a sense of shared heritage. I was truly happy inside and out. She said, they're all, she says, but you have, uh, being, you have to remember that life isn't about pointing to taking the next miracle pill. She says, we need to get back to the basics. She said, while Mediterranean lifestyle is down to the simplest practices, it's from what we eat to how we move to how we interact with others. We are benefiting our health at the deepest, most crucial level. Modern interventions are great, but farming practices um, without pesticides, soaked crops, and food stuff with additives, preservatives, artificial colorings, um, and diets made up with mostly refined carbohydrates with very little plants. No wonder many of us do not feel well. She says, now our, everybody is going back to this reclaiming of age old practices. They're returning to the farm, returning to the kitchen, returning to tables shared with family and friends. They're saying no to processed foods, yes, to plants grown in their own communities, even their own backyards. Um, no to time savers like microwave meals. Yes, to simple prepared meals with very few quality ingredients. She says, I urge you to remember that with every small change you make, you're making one step closer to feeling your best with very few chronic aches and pains, less digestive discomfort, less bloating, fewer skin compl complaints, and more, no more lethargy. She says, healthy living is meant to give you more, to nourish your body, feel amazing, and more opportunities to connect with the outside world, ways to have fun, enjoy life. And after all, science confirms that when we treat our bodies right, they give us back the most incredible gift, true health. Oh, I love that. I know. So, it's That's a great, beautiful. It's a great book just to remind you that it's just not all about food. It's about loving people and community and having fun. So, I love that. I'm getting that book for sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll, throw it in. I'll throw it in the chat right now. Will you? So, yes, I'm throwing it in and we're done and it smells great. I just wish we were all together so we could just put our salads together and eat Love it. it. Hey, I have my tower garden. Do you guys want to see it? Yes. Okay, let me see if I can flip it. All right, can you see it? Wait, move my yeah. finger. Yeah. Oh gosh, right. everything's looking great. Yeah, I mean, okay, so I just have to tell you. Oh you my gosh. Water. All right, so here's the thing for me is I want this has been this has been growing for, for four weeks. Okay. All right. And then you can just this I like I walk by, I grab it off the tower garden. <laughs> but you know what? I really want to treat myself and get one of those to put in my house, not have my outside one. Oh well, this just worked for me and it's in the corner. We have, you know, one of those, it's our Big kitchen, dining room, family room, big space, and it's in the corner, and it sits by the slider, but it's not enough light, so we've got the, the light kit, um, and so there's a light kit, and the water, I mean, it literally, if you have a black thumb, you still can grow a tower garden, because hey, the lights come on and off, I set in a timer, and the water goes off, you know, like five minutes every 45 minutes. I would think five minutes every 45 minutes. It's pretty foolproof. I haven't done much to it. I have to tell you. I'm I have very not excited. green thumb and I can <laughs> actually grow something. So I can attest to that because I can't do anything except for make sure that there's water in there and I grow really well. <laughs> yeah, there you, and that's it. That's really all you have to do. Especially, I love the, the home edition because it has a, it has a little sensor. I don't know if you can see this, but um, it's got a little, can you see that little, um, where is it? Can you see that little thing that sticks out a stick that sticks out and it has a floating, um, a floating ball that's inside the basin. And it just, it shows you when it's time to add more water. It's so simple, literally so Jen, the simplest thing, I, simple way to garden. Can you, um, and I'm not, I don't want to put you on the spot here, but uh, if you, if you feel like your room is not too messy, can you kind of back up and let them yeah. see where it is? Sure. 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 Okay. 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 There you go. Okay. So there you go. There's the entryway. That's my kitchen dining room area. There's my DOG. <laughs> and then I'm in the family room space and it sits over in the corner. 
and and if you can hear it i mean it's uh, very peaceful it's the, very peaceful it sounds it sounds like a you know just like a zen garden a zen fountain i mean it's okay, super, and then it goes on time. For you. show one more time okay go ahead jen you have a question go ahead <laughs> what was your question oh yeah jen did you have a question i'm not seeing the I did. I don't, I don't see her garden right now. I see you, but that's totally fine. Um, I also have a dog. How far from the ground is the lowest green? Because I'm worried that my dog might try to eat it. Well, you know, um, is it two it's, feet? A foot no, feet? it's probably about maybe, yeah, close to two feet. But my dog is, I mean, he's a biggie. He's 120 oh. pound Rhodesian Ridgeback. He's mm -hmm. left it alone. I mean, I know that every animal is different, but he he doesn't, he loves lots of different fruits and vegetables, but he's not a lettuce fan. So <laughs> I gave it to him once and he just spit it out. So I think that he just kind of not interested, but you know, every dog's different. <laughs> and it's, it's about three feet by three feet circular, right? The, the amount of room it takes. Yeah. And it's about um, the light, even with the light kit, it's yeah maybe a little over five and a half feet tall it's not super big mm -hmm. and it holds okay. 32 plants what the ones the... what's that i'm sorry i'm sorry I, I'm, I'm good there but what about the the width how how wide does it go it with goes i mean with the lights width wise um i mean it's the the lights stand out maybe 18 inches from the side of the tower it really doesn't, does not take up a lot of space at all. I still have some slots that I need to fill. I was waiting for, it was a okay. little cold when I, when I planted. So the, the place that had the seedlings actually was in um, North Georgia and it wasn't warm enough for spinach and basil and mint. So those are my next things that I'm putting in. So we just do lots of herbs. We have um, basil, no, I'm sorry. We have spinach. No, we don't have spinach. We have cilantro, oregano, sage, um, parsley, something called lemon balm, which is so good. I'd never heard of it before, but I tried it and you can just, I mean, it tastes like lemon. It's just a, you know, it's an herb, but it's great for teas. And then I have all different types of mixed lettuces. Um, and then I'm going to do some spinach and kale as well. How so long all can this, you feed off of one? Say it again. I'm sorry. How long can you feed off of one? Well, just one, one plant. Yes. Um, gosh, you know, I mean, I put it this way, seedlings were this big. And then I went to Mexico and came home and in 10 days, they were triple the size. So I would say, I mean, it makes sense to continuously harvest them because it mm -hmm. just, it um, encourages more growth. So what mm -hmm. I did was with like my lettuces, I, I bought two or three, depending on what they were. And they're, I mean, gosh, one head is probably enough for a salad for at least four to six people. That's just one. So if you're mixing it up, I okay. would say, you know, I mean, one head of lettuce is great, is great for probably one person for the week. But it's just, okay, you know, getting to a point where you just pick small amounts and then you always have something growing in your garden. That's so fun. <laughs> Any I other questions? 